Is it a holy spear? No. Is it a broken bayonet? No. Is it a pointed stick? No. It's Rusty Dagger. Cue the intro. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we are looking at another cheap but good game today, and this is going to be a very small scale uh, fantasy skirmish, which is in the form of a zine format. So you can expect um, a lot of small releases for this game. At the time of recording, we have the core rules and one expansion called the Den of Rats. Um, I mean, what you have here, this is one of the parts of the core rules. This is the combat tile. Um, you'll basically be playing these adventures from encounter to encounter or from challenge to challenge. And most of the action is going to take place on a 10 by 6 grid or board. And in the core rules, you will get a very simple example like this. Um, but I know that a lot of people are kind of making their own battle boards. What do they call it? Combat tile. Um, so this, this game, Rusty Dagger, is by Rob Salters from Table Salt Gaming Designs. I think this is his second game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and like I say, it's a, it's a very small scale sort of skirmish tabletop game where there will be these, I would say fairly regular, I would hope, small adventure packs and expansions so you can um, take your adventurer on a, on a path of advancement, a path of development. I don't see at the moment anything in terms of how to make your own adventures. That may come later. Um, but it's, anyway, it's, it's, it's worth a look. The game itself is currently on Drive Through RPG. I'll put the link down below. Uh, I think the core set is two dollars, and the Den of Rats I think is a freebie. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's worth the money. It's it see it has it has a lot of potential. At the moment, there's not a huge amount out there. It's the core set, which includes the rules plus one adventure, and you have this expansion one, the Den of Rats, which is a second adventure. So um, it's just been released. It's fairly new, but I, I'm expecting good things from this. I can really see this develop into something that a lot of people will find interesting. And like I say, it's a very cheap intro to this kind of game. So what do you get in the core pack? Well... As well as an example of the combat tile, the kind of area where you're going to be doing most of your fighting, you get the core rules, you get the hero rules, you get one adventure, you get two sheets for character advancement, you get a you get a character sheet, but I'm not, I don't know, the, the spaces for putting in the values seem to be extremely small. So I may redesign this to have larger boxes to put numbers and information. But I mean, it's, it's a nice enough design. It's just that, I don't know, these boxes don't seem to be big enough in my personal opinion. Um, you also get... <laughs> A little info sheet how to make the booklets because that's how this game is presented uh, if we take a look at if we take a look at the adventure that comes in the core pack the spire of the golem you'll notice that it's designed in such a way that it will create a booklet when it is folded and cut correctly and it ends up looking something like like this now this this was just the tester I wanted to see whether I could just fold it straight away. The answer is n you could, but the thing is that the the left and right borders are just a little bit big, so I'm going to have to trim it down, I think. This was just a test. Uh, so what I'll be doing with these, like I say, the adventure sheets and the rule sheets all come in the same format. What I need to do is trim the ends a little bit and then it will come out a lot better. But basically, you'll fold it 
cut it and then you'll have these little cute little booklets <laughs> for the games and the adventures. So what I'm going to do before we continue is I'm going to quickly uh, just trim these a little bit and create the booklets and then we'll continue looking at the game. Right, well, as you can see here, I have constructed the booklets. Comes out very nice. So that's the core rules. We have the hero rules. Again, every page is numbered just to check and make sure that it's come out right. And then here we have the two adventures. This is the Spire of the Golem that comes with the core set. And this is the Den of Rats, which is the first and free expansion. Um, okay, so just a quick note there, there is in the core set, there is actually, as I mentioned just now, there is actually a, uh, just a quick note thing about how to actually make the booklets. It is fairly simple. Now, I did print a tester. I folded it according to the instructions and it ended up being a little bit, a little bit out, uh, but that was because these edge borders were too big so what I did was left and right I gave this a five millimeter uh, five millimeter border and then cut and that seemed to do the trick now each of these little pages this is a very, very clever little thing this I know that there's other games but this is the first game that I have that uses this this method of creating little booklets I have seen other games that have it I think it's very very clever but with that five millimeter border on the sides with the rest of it cut off yes it works perfectly so what you do is you take your sheet of rules or adventure first of all you fold it in half along the length yes yeah, so you take it like this you fold it in half then you fold in half again then you fold in half again now what i found was when i did that i did get some creasing on the edge a little bit um, so what I did with the actual books was, first step was still the same, so you take this, turn it over, so you fold in half, then you fold again. Now at this point I didn't fold one last time because like I say it, it ended up being a little bit thick and I got some crease marks. So what I actually did was I opened it up <laughs> and I just folded it one more time across that way. Once that's done, you then need to look for the point, the cross section point here and the cross point here, where these um, creases line up, and you just cut lengthways along these two here, along the middle half there, like that. Okay, just cut there, then push, oops, fold it in half this way, push <laughs> together, flatten, flatten, done! Easy, 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 easy. So yeah, so I have I have all the books now. I've got the two adventures and I've got the two rule books for Rusty Dagger, this um, this solo adventure game. All right now, uh, I'm not I'm not really going to go and explain all the rules. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some gameplay and kind of explain what I'm doing as I'm playing. Um, Rob Salters at Table Salt Games actually has a very good video to kind of explain the rules. I'll, I'll put the link down in the description. But what we'll do is we will use um, maybe one of the adventures to... It's just so we go through the gameplay and whether you can see it's, if it's something that you'd like to um, purchase, download and play. So yeah, like I mentioned earlier, you do get the basic basic sort of template for a combat tile in the download for the core rules. Um, I have decided to, well, I mean, like I say, some people have used um, some more expensive methods to create their combat tiles. I've just used um, sort of a dungeon floor download from Two Minute Tabletop. Um, I've stuck it onto Artboard. Um, just to give it a little bit of strength. I've done two boards. I've done green for outside and <laughs> a sort of brownie grey for inside. 
So this will be for dungeons, taverns, etc. This will be for woods and every other outdoors. But yeah, so you have the 1 to 6 here. You have the 1 to 10 there. And basically, yeah, you'll, you'll be using these combat tiles to uh, conduct all of the kind of combat encounters or the combat challenges. Yeah, with, um, with this game, you know, they talk about miniatures and terrain pieces and uh, you, you position the terrain pieces first on the, on the board. It can be low terrain or high terrain. It can also occupy one square, for example, like a barrel can occupy one square. It can occupy two squares. I'm not sure, I think this might be a bit too big, but it can basically occupy two squares uh, this way or this way. So like that, for example, or it can occupy four squares, in which case it kind of takes up a four square area. Now, the way that you normally, unless the scenario or the adventure told you otherwise, the way that you place um, terrain is using one six sided and one 10 sided dice. And the way that you do that is actually very simple. You roll and you align the D6 with here and the D10 with here. So for example, here says one, three. So I would place the first piece of terrain where those intersect. Second piece of terrain, we get a two for the D6, we get an eight for the D10. So we would then place the terrain on this square here. Now let's say, for example, I want to place this large terrain here, this four square terrain. Basically, it just has to include that square. So I could put here, I could put here. As long as that square that's been rolled is one of the four in that square kind of thing. So let's put it here. So basically, I'm going to be using uh, eight, two, eight, three, seven, three, and seven, two. So that's where the terrain is. Let's do one more. Let's do another another large. Oops, we get a three and a nine. So a three is this row, a nine is this. So it's wanting to go here. Now th this would already be blocking, obviously. So here I would probably put like that. Now, when you start the adventure again, sometimes the adventure may say to to do deployment a different way. Um, but let's say, for example, that we want to deploy randomly. The scenario or the adventure says to deploy randomly. Well, for that, you just need to use the D6. For any heroes, you will deploy on the first column. For any enemies, you will deploy on the 10 column. So you roll. So we're, we're placing the hero first we get a two. So you place your hero on the first column yeah, where you roll the dice. So this is a two, so I place him at one, two. For monsters, you will place in column 10. But the same thing applies. You roll a d6 for each of your opponents, so five. So I place my first opponent in, donk, 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 Five there. Second, I get a four. Now, row four is actually blocked by this terrain. So what I have to do is I then have to go to the next column. That's also blocked. The next column, that one's free. So I would then place the next enemy in the fourth row, because that's what I rolled. But the tenth column was blocked by terrain. The ninth column was blocked by terrain. So I had to put him in column eight. The third creature, I get a two. The two is free here. Yeah. Row two, column 10 is clear, so he goes there. And then for the final villain, in this example, we roll, we get a three. Now, again, row three, column 10 is blocked, nine is blocked, eight is blocked, seven is blocked, but six is free. So our final villain would be placed in that sixth column. I've, what I'm thinking of in terms of this game and in terms of its, well, what I, what I would think is its 
perfect application is as a portable game. And by using 2D tokens instead of three-dimensional terrain pieces or miniatures, you're being able to take this game anywhere in such a small little box or pouch or bag. Like I say, the physical representation is here. You can play the game. Still looks good. Um, let's let's do the characters. Okay, so for a hero, let's say that let's say we've got Granny Granny Biggins is our hero. Sorry, for for deployment you only use D six. So uh, we got a six. So this is my Granny Granny Biggins, my hero. She's a I don't know what she is. Some kind of sorcerer, a magician in the kitchen. <laughs> so um, six. We place the heroes in column one. So she's going to be placed in uh, squares there. One six. So what I've done with these little tokens is that for the for the characters I've put them with a little arrow at the bottom, yeah, down here. So this this kind of arrow will kind of make clear which square she's in. Because the thing is, if I do the tokens to be the, the size of one square, they're not going to be very detailed at all. So I've done them like this, but the, basically the square is pointing at which uh, square they're in. So that's our hero. Let's maybe she's brought her kid along with her. As a companion. So we roll, we get a five. Okay, the first column five is blocked, so we have to put the kid. Here's the kid. <laughs> the kid in second column, but in five. So again, we're looking for the arrow, the pointy bit. Now, let's say that they're up against three zombies, for example. First zombie is going to be placed at two. Oh, Christ, didn't want to do that. Sorry, guys. So let's say that he wants to be placed at uh, two. So, tenth column, two is blocked. So we put the first, the first zombie we put there. Next guy is at five. So the next zombie is there. Third guy, third zombie is at four. So the third zombie is there. And I'll just overlap it when you're just using these tokens. And again, these tokens, I've just cut them out and again, stuck them to some, some artboard. So doesn't matter if they overlap, it's fine, it's 2D, they're tokens, doesn't matter in the slightest. So this, this is how I'm planning on using this game, because like I say, I think it's perfectly designed to be that travel game, to be that portable game that you can bring anywhere, even to the office. Shh, don't tell the boss. And you can, you can make tokens to represent beds, uh, crates, trees for outside, sarcophaguses. A copper guy. What else? Maybe pillars or wells, depending on how you want to use them. There's a lot of things that you can actually do. Yeah, maybe some some rubble, some clutter. And in terms of the, you know, the tokens. Again, you can just use you know, these little token graphics and stick them on these little things. Again, with the the arrow pointing to where they go. All these tokens, by the way, again are from uh, Two Minute Tabletop. So that's how you set up a game, and this is what I'm going to be using. I am going to be using tokens and counters for this game. To me, it, of course, having the 3D terrain and the miniatures looks amazing, but I'm kind of looking at this, and like I say, the first time I saw just literally the sheer tininess of the, you know, of the, um, the rules, the rule books, the booklets, it just immediately sprang to mind that this is amazing for a travel game. Another good thing about using things like tokens is that for gamers who are not necessarily tabletop gamers and don't have miniatures or 3D terrain, it's much easier for them to create these little tokens rather than go out and buy and assemble and paint you know, sort of miniatures. Maybe board gamers, card gamers, maybe ha having these tokens would be a good little... Um, way for them to start playing the game. And I don't know, maybe maybe Rob, I don't know, if, if he's interested in it, maybe he can actually release future zines, because this is supposed to be a zine game, Z-I-N-E, -E, lots of small releases. I don't know, maybe, maybe a sheet of tokens to go with it? Because with, um, I think it was Den of Rats, was it the Den of Rats? We did get a page telling us exactly what we needed in terms of figures and terrain. Um, I don't know. Maybe a page of 
tokens that can be cut out. So that literally you don't need anything else than what you download from, from Table Salt Games. It's a complete package if you included the tokens with it as well. And maybe instead of the adventures being free, maybe you make them one dollar. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure you're not going to get many complaints. Okay, before we can actually start playing Rusty Dagger, we have to create our character. And in Rusty Dagger, character creation is very similar to a very simple RPG. Uh, we don't need the core rules for this. We just need the hero rules. This little booklet that we have constructed contains everything we need to know about character creation and character advancement. So that's what we're going to be using as our reference. And to be honest with you, once you've read through this a couple of times, you don't actually need it to create a character because the character sheet has pretty much everything that you need this is just to let you understand what the different things are. But at the top, we write our character's name. I'm going to be playing a character called Jerdun Rasar. Yeah, it's from one of those random online generators. <laughs> um, title. Well, there are four different character types that you can play. You have the Grafter, the Crusader, the Mercenary, and the Necromancer. I think I will probably play the Crusader, the knight, the paladin, the guy who doesn't get hurt, hopefully. <laughs> so we're going to be playing a Crusader. There you go, Crusader. All right, top left, this is where we're going to be putting all of our stats and our substats. Bottom left, we have our possessions. All of our items and weapons will go here. You can have up to three weapons and up to five items. Wealth, and then down the bottom here is total SP. SP stands for stat points. You start off with 38, which will be split between the different stats. Health, combat, knowledge, judgment, and personality. Is that a spelling mistake? Um, anyway, anyway, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, the educator in me. Um, but yeah, you start off, I think, with a total of 38 SP, statistic or stat points, when you complete adventures and do um, tasks and quests in the game. Your rewards will be wealth, items, magic, but also stat points. And this is how you measure your experience and go up in level. Um, up here... Top right, you have all of your level and abilities. So like I say, in terms of your advancement. So at 38 SP, you're at first level, you have the ability natural success. Every type, so each of those four classes, all get natural success as their first level ability. Which basically means on a double six, when you roll a double six, you automatically succeed. Uh, when you reach 40 SP, so when you earn an additional two stat points, you go up to level two. And from there, you can select another ability. Now, you can choose to select an ability from your new level or from a level um, lower, or from any lower, any lower level. So for example, as a Crusader, level one, natural success, everyone gets that. Upon reaching level two, you have a choice either Dazing Strike or Will of Iron. So you can pick one of those when you raise up to level 2. When you get 43 stat points, you raise to level 3. So you advance, yeah? you level up. Now you have a choice now of either Charge, Fallback, or the ability at level 2 that you did not pick. Now, when you're creating a character and when you're deciding in terms of your stats... I highly recommend that you look at these title and ability sheets. Uh, one page has the Grafter and Crusader. The other page has the Mercenary and Necromancer. I highly recommend you look at these because it gives you an idea how your character type or your title will develop. And that can also give you an idea in terms of what stats are important. 
Um, back in the oh god, back in the day, long time ago, when I played D and D Redbox, Advanced D and D, first and second edition. You know, it was like clerics. You need wisdom. Paladins. You need charisma. You know, and um, it's it's something like that here. So, depending on the type of character that you're going to be playing, you should, like I say, you should look at the advancements to give you an idea how to place your initial stats. And yes, I said place, not roll. Because in character creation, you are not rolling any dice. There are decisions to make. And the first thing you have to do, obviously, is name and title. After that, we then have to think in terms of our statistics, our stats. So we have one, two, three, four, five main stats. At the top here, it says stat point array four, seven, seven, nine, eleven. What you have to do is you have to assign those numbers to your main stats. So obviously, the highest one is eleven. You may want to put that in maybe your most important stat. Now, for Crusader, it's a good idea to have health and combat pretty damn high. Uh, if you're doing something like a, um, a grafter, for example, uh, maybe health uh, and maybe judgment would be important. Yeah, that that luck's always going to be useful when you're trying to pick locks and stuff. Yeah. Um, so you assign, like I said, there's five numbers here: four, seven, seven, nine, eleven. You assign them to the main stats. So let's let's do that now. I'm a crusader, so I'm more about tank. I'm the tank of a party, so I'm thinking in terms of defense. Um, I, I want to put... Okay, so 11, 11 is the highest, and then I have a 9. Now, I'm thinking that those two are going to be in health and combat. Um, if I roleplay completely true to what a crusader is, I would probably put the 11 in health. Because like I say, they're the tank. They're supposed to absorb all the damage and kind of help all the others. But I think I'm going to put the 11 in combat. Because uh, if you kill the guy, he can't hit you back. <laughs> now, here, here's the issue I have with this character sheet. And I've mentioned this before. These boxes are really small. I don't know whether I can actually write in these boxes large enough for you guys to actually see on the camera. Um, I wish that these boxes were bigger. Um, at some point, I may redesign the character sheet, um, do my own one where I've got... I mean, look here, for, for your levels and abilities, you've got a huge amount of space to write down your abilities and maybe even a description. But the thing is, if you've got, if you've got the reference sheet, you don't actually need to write a description here. So, I don't know, maybe this is a bit of a waste of space because you're only going to write the name of the ability that you choose. So maybe I can take some space from here... And maybe just give more space so I can have bigger boxes. But anyhow, 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 that's that's for later. Today, I just want to use this as it is. So I'm thinking for combat, I'm going to... Okay, I don't think I can write inside. Uh, I'm going to put 11 into combat. I don't know whether you guys can see that. Is that is that better? <laughs> even even zoomed in, you can, you can barely, it's like barely enough space to actually write the numbers in here. Um, like I said, I wish these were bigger. Never mind. Okay, so I'm going to put 11 in combat. I think I'll put the 9 in health. Um, we've got 7, 7, and 4. Now, I'm thinking... The thing is, like, with normal RPGs, I don't know whether it's, it was just me, but uh, it's like charisma. Oh, no, it's bloody charisma. You always put the lowest, the lowest dice roll in charisma, unless you're playing a... A paladin or something, or a bard. Um, candor and guile would be quite useful for uh, for getting help, for bribing, for getting discounts at the shop, for getting people to follow you. Um, luck and wisdom, arcane survival. Yeah, I don't know if that's, is that a spelling. I don't know if there's supposed to be an e there. I'll have to. I'll have to double check. Um, I'm thinking maybe the. Four in judgment? No, because luck. I need luck. All right, I'm going to put the four in knowledge. 
Yeah, maybe maybe Jerdun is an urban boy, grown up in the towns, doesn't really know much about arcane or survival. He's kind of just got a kind of a rich merchant family or something that he's kind of always relied on. Yeah, a little bit of background. So I'm going to put the four there, which means I have two sevens left. So that means that judgment and personality are both seven. Again, I wish these were bigger. Okay. Now, once you've done that, these are your basic stats, okay? When you do adventures and quests, one of the rewards you get are SP, stat points. And what you'll do is you will assign stat points to these um, stats, obviously. We haven't finished. As you can see, each of the stats has got two sub-stats. Yeah? And what we have to do is we have to split our main stat between those two sub-stats. So, for example, for health, I've got nine points. I need to allocate part of that nine points into agility and part into brawn. Now, I'm thinking that my guy is going to be more of a tank, so I think his brawn is going to be higher. So I'm thinking maybe a five-four split. Um, uh, doesn't at this point, it doesn't really matter. Because when you use your stats for challenges and for tests, you don't actually use the main stat. I don't think you use the main stat. You normally use one of these to give you um, modifiers. And down the bottom here, it says here sub-trait modifiers. So when you have to roll, for example, like a, a narrative challenge where you have to convince somebody to follow you, you're not going to be rolling against your personality. You'll be rolling probably candor or guile. And you're not taking the number that's here. What you're using is the modifier that the number gives you. Again, very similar to, I don't know whether it's still the same, but very similar to old school D&D. When your strength was 18 stroke zero zero, you got a plus, I forget what it was, plus seven modifier to damage. So for example, like here, if I do, now do I, or do I want to go six, three? Six will give me a plus one. Three gives me a minus one. No, I'll keep it at this. I'll go... Five brawn and four agility. Now, what that does, if I look down here, the four agility gives me a zero modifier, and the five for brawn also gives me a zero modifier. So both of these are plus zero based on oops, based on the stats. Like I say, you have to check each number and then you see any modifiers it may give you. Now, for combat, I've got 11 points that I can split. So I could go 6-5. Six, the, six, the 6 would give me a plus 1. The 5 would give me a 0. Or I could go 7-4. Now, 6 and 7 both give me a plus 1. But if I raise my combat with my next um, SP reward... I could raise my combat to 12, and I could increase one of these to 8, which would then give me a plus 2. That sounds like a plan, doesn't it? So I think I'm going to go 7-4. Uh, I'm a crusader, so I think I have to put 7 in swordsmanship and 4 in archery. So like I say, when I complete an adventure, when I earn SP rewards, I can then put maybe 1 point into combat and then allocate that point to swordsmanship instead of archery. That would then be an 8, and then I would get a plus 2. So my modifiers for archery is plus 0, for swordsmanship is plus 1. Knowledge. Now, knowledge, I've got four. <laughs> I've got a massive 4 points. Arcane and survival. Now, the thing is, if I... If I put a zero, I get a minus two. If I have two, I get a minus one. If I've got a four, I've got a zero. So, hmm, I think I'm just going to go two, two. So, arcane of two, survival of two, which means both of them have a minus one modifier. Now, I'm thinking when I, when I redo the character sheet, I may actually put a space here to put the modifiers. And maybe just put this at the bottom of the sheet rather than actually here with this. Um, okay, luck and wisdom. I think I think I need more luck. 
But again, I've only got seven, so it's going to be a four and a three, a five and a two. I think I'll go. F I think I'll go four and three. So I want four luck, three wisdom. So a four gives me a modifier of plus zero. A three gives me a modifier of minus one. Personality, candor and guile. Um, I think I'm going to be more towards... I think candor's more positive, I think. Guile is kind of more negative. So I think I'll probably, as a crusader, I'd probably be maybe... Again, I think four, three, yeah. So plus zero and minus one. All right, so we have now assigned our stat point array. We've assigned to the main stats. And then each of those we've then split amongst the two substats. Is that, is that what they're called? Substats? Is there a subtreats? <laughs> I'm using, okay, so these are not even though they're using stat points. These are actually uh, traits and sub-traits. Same thing. It's the same thing. All right, now your wounds, if I remember correctly, I think your wounds is equal to the number of health. So um, I will have nine health, which means I can take nine damage. What we'll do is we'll mark off the damage as it happens in this, uh, in this wound box. Okay, what else do we have to do? Okay, so the only other thing that we need to do when we're creating a character is the possessions. Uh, you start off with a basic melee weapon, a sword, an axe, and hammer, whatever you, whatever you want, whatever fits your miniature. But you also start with 15 wealth or 15 gold. Now, like I mentioned just now, I think I want to start with a bow just to get that initial attack before the enemies close in. So on the back of the hero rules, there is actually a starting item list. Now, I'm sure that in future updates, there's going to be more items added. But this is just what's in the core rules. So let's have a look and see. We've got healing. Po okay, a healing potion could also be really nice. Remove up to two wounds. That could be really useful hmm and that costs four wealth iron skin nope poison nope acid i mean acid could be useful six wealth range four as six as action score should that be as or cr should it be like a because when you're when you're doing stuff, AS is your action score, but you're trying to get a challenge rating. So they say it's vial of acid, AS6. So if you use this as a ranged attack, that is the number, and then you have to roll the defense for the target? Or should that be CR? No, I think I think AS is correct. I think this is the number that the, your opponent has to roll against in order to avoid it, I think. Yeah. Because otherwise your opponent won't... I don't know, because you've got to throw it anyway, haven't you? Um, oh, it doesn't, I mean, this is something that maybe somebody can answer down in the comments. Uh, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. Um, because I want to get the longbow. You see, we start with... Let's get rid of the core rules. These are really nice little booklets. I really do like this. Very clever way of doing this. Um, anyway, anyway, anyway. You start off with 15 wealth. Now, if I get the bow, that's going to cost me 10, which doesn't leave me enough to get the vial of acid. That's six. So, range of 10. Once five attacks are made with this weapon, it's out of arrows. At camp, additional arrows can be bought in quantities of five, five wealth. Well, I mean, once it runs out of ammo, I can't use it, but it will be good for five attacks. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to buy a longbow. So I'm going to put, okay, equipped weapon, I'm going to put longbow. And I'll just put next to it five, because it's got five arrows left. And I've also got my, um, I'll just put a sword. That's the basic weapon you start with. 
So that brings me down to five wealth. Now, I, I think I'll also get myself a small healing potion. Healing potions are worth their weight in gold. I mean, <laughs> have a look at my note quest videos for evidence of that. So I'm going to get a small healing potion. And that costs four. So I've got one wealth left. And that, my friends, is character creation done. So we've done the name, we've done the title, the, t the, the character class. We've done the stats or traits, as they're called. Even though they're stat points, they're called traits. I don't know. We've done our possessions. We've got one wealth left. We have our starting stat points of 38. Another two, and I can go up to second level and get another ability. Natural success means on a double six, I automatically hit or do whatever I'm supposed to be doing. This space here is for companions. You can have up to three companions, and this is where you'll be putting all their stats and their traits. Again, I wish the boxes were bigger. Anywho, I am going to be playing Jordan Rasa, the Crusader. <laughs> Yeah, I've already prepared a token. Remember, I'm um, I'm playing this game as... Oh, it's going to focus. I'm playing this game with tokens, not miniatures, just to kind of demonstrate that it's an amazing portable game. But yeah, I've already done a token for my guy. So this is Jordan, the Crusader, the Protector. <laughs> so that is character creation finished. We are now going to take... Jordan into the Spire of the Golem. Dun, dun, dun.